Good evening. A welcome to worship this evening for our final midweek Advent service before we join together again to celebrate Christmas. Uh, as, we, as we prepare our hearts tonight, we focus on our final uh, Isaiah picturing the coming Messiah theme. Um, this, this evening we focus on the fact that Jesus comes as a light, a light for the Gentiles, a light for you and for me, a light that brings salvation into the world. Uh, God willing, that's the message you'll hear throughout the, the service this evening and the message you'll hear through our readings and through our hymns. Everything you need will be here. The service is the same evening prayer service we followed the last three or last two weeks of midweek Advent services. With that being said, we'll begin our service and I invite the congregation to please stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. We, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we sing our song. Let the incense of our prayers rise before you, O Lord, and let your mercy descend on us, that we may sing your praises with the church on earth and forever in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our gospel lesson for this evening comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, starting with verse 22. And I'll invite the congregation to please stand for the reading of the gospel this evening. In our gospel reading, we'll see Simeon sing a song of praise that he has had the opportunity to to see uh, the Savior, to see the one who is born as, as the light for revelation for the Gentiles, pointing to the the prophecy that we'll see in the book of Isaiah this evening. We read, When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The word of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. We join together to sing sing our hymn of the evening. It's hymn 497, hymn 497.
We bow our heads and we pray. O Holy Spirit, come to us with your comforting word, which alone can drive away our doubts. Direct us to see our Savior Jesus, that we may trust in him with our whole heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our focus for this evening will be Isaiah chapter 49, just verses 5 through 7, and I'll read uh, the section from Isaiah at the end of our, our devotion this evening. The Advent wreath is lit throughout our season of Advent, uh, and it's really there to serve as a visual aid for us as we worship. It's a sort of sermon in symbolism, a silent preacher, you could say. Uh, because the circle shape of the evergreen bows, it's a, a reminder, it represents the everlasting life that is ours, uh, that is given to us through the Christ child. The, the purple candles are there as a reminder of the call that God gives us to, to turn to Jesus and repent. The, the call that John the Baptist uh, was, was crying out in the wilderness to prepare the people for, for the coming of Jesus. A call to recognize our sinfulness, but an essential, an essential part of that repentance is also recognizing that God, in his grace, has forgiven our sins through Jesus. But this, the central part of this silent sermon is really the, the big white candle in the middle, the Christ candle, which will soon be lit up on Christmas Eve, symbolizing the fact that Jesus has come. Jesus, the light of the world, has come into the world to save his people from their sin. In the pages of scripture, they're, they're littered with all sorts of different pictures that, that talk to us about what Jesus' saving work was. And we've seen it really throughout the, the weeks of our midweek Advent services. We saw it as we looked at the picture of, of Jesus as the, the root that came forth from the, or the branch that came forth from the stump of Jesse. Jesus would come forth from humble beginnings. Yet, after that, in week two, we saw it as Jesus came as a, a mighty one, as a prince, as a wonderful counselor into this world. And tonight, we're going to observe another colorful picture of Jesus to help stimulate our imagination and impress on us a, a truth of who Jesus is and why he came for us. In our lesson that, that we'll read at the end, God really lays out for us the purpose of this servant of the Lord, uh, the purpose of, of Jesus, who, who God was sending into this world. And he lays out that, that purpose really in our lesson, and it's a twofold purpose. First, Jesus was to bring light to the people of Israel. He was to come and restore those people. He was to bring them back, to gather them uh, around him, to, to proclaim to them the forgiveness of sins and to save them from their sins. But the task was, was much more than simply bringing back the lost people of Israel. The task was for this servant to be the savior of all. As was promised to, to Abraham years before, this was going to be the child that would fulfill the promise to Abraham that all people on earth would be blessed through this line. This Savior Jesus was the one that was going to be the light that was going to bring salvation into the world. This was the one to be the light to the Gentiles. And the mission of our Savior, it's really, it's laid out in these verses that could be called the Great Commission of the Old Testament. Because in these verses, the, the assignment is given. And that assignment was to be carried out throughout the, the servant of the Lord's life, throughout Jesus' life. And it was to be carried out also through his death on the cross for, for you and for me. And here was the assignment. It was to come into the world and to bring hope and to bring joy to all nations, to every generation that was sitting in darkness. 
to shine forth as the light that was going to bring salvation to people who were lost in the shadow of death. The goal, the, 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 the mission was to be the redeemer to buy all people back from darkness. Now, in the Old Testament, if someone was in debt to another person, uh, they would often work for that person. Um, the, the, the person who they were in debt to would take their entire property, and that included uh, working for them. And if they wanted to, to work for years, they could gain that property back. They had the opportunity to do so. But they also had what was called a, a redeemer. They could have someone who would redeem them, who would purchase that land purchased their property back for them. It was usually a relative or someone like that. The Lord is our Redeemer who has bought us back from darkness because we, his people, had sold ourselves to the servitude of sin that we could not escape on our own. We needed a redeeming light. And in order for us really to, to see the picture of light, in order for us to see Jesus uh, and see what it means that Jesus is our light, we need to look at the depravity of the darkness. Because the reality is that the, the depravity of the darkness of our sin is one that, that has caused us all to be lost. As we look at the, the opposite of light, we, we see dark, and as we look at dark, we often use the word dark in our world to refer to evil. Ever since humans came into the world, there is no doubt that our, our nature gravitates towards evil. Philosophers have studied over years and years how to keep the dark side of human nature in check. Because humans have this, this propensity to, to, be, uh, to carry out actions of, of violence, of rage, of aggression, of a self-seeking domination of other people. The darkness of, of our human nature, it cannot be hidden. And God really even brings that out in his word for us. God shows us that, that apart from God, our hearts, we are clouded by darkness. We are filled with evil thoughts of murder, of slander, of adultery, of pride. These are the emotions. These are the actions that God says flows from within our own hearts. There is a darkness that, that is found in human beings that we cannot rid ourselves of. And for the sake of, and for those who seek salvation through their, their own actions, through their selves, and reject Christ, the light who has come into the world, there's an even worse darkness that has been prepared. An eternal darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, the, the picture of darkness, it, expre it expresses this, this indescribable woe, this, this, this complete helplessness, this utter despair. For a person who has been trapped in darkness, in the darkness of their own sin and depravity, Light would be a very big glimpse of hope. And I like to, to, to use the picture of, of winter in Ottawa. It, when you think of winter time in Ottawa, where much of four months is covered in darkness, the days are short, the, the sun goes down a bit earlier in the evening, and even many of the days that, that we have are gloomy because clouds are covering the sky. What generally happens? The moods of people are harmed and effective because we are covered by darkness. But on those few days where the sun comes out, on those few days where light shines through, the mood changes. 
because light has shined forth through the darkness. Light drives away the darkness. For, for a person who has been trapped in darkness for so long, the light is hope. The light is joy. For the person who has been trapped in darkness, like the Israelites who were in captivity for so many years, like us who are, were trapped in the darkness of our sinful nature, the light means deliverance. The light means rescue. The, the light means safety. Our Redeemer, Jesus, he came to be exactly that, the light. And as our light of salvation, Jesus offered a payment that, that was necessary to buy us back from that slavery of sin, from that slavery to darkness that we could not escape on our own. See, his, his perfect life and his perfect death in our place, it was the payment that we could not make, but it was the payment that, that set you and me free. It, it was uh, the light that shone in the darkness of my sin. You see, where, where darkness represents hopelessness and despair, well, that's where Jesus shines forth, driving out the, the darkness of my sin. And where the darkness of hell, it describes a, a place of woe and terror, the light of heaven is described as a place where there will be no more darkness of night, where there will be no more lamp that is needed to light the way or sun that is needed to mark the day, because God himself will be our light. God had amazing plans to display the splendor of his servant, Jesus. He had plans to make him come forth as a light that would bring salvation for all people. Not just hope for Israel, not just hope and deliverance for, from sin and death for the Israelites, but for the world. And this life, this light, it shines forth as a deliverer from darkness to give me a glimmer of hope in the midst of despair. This light of life, it shines upon our hearts, creating out of this dark heart a spark of faith which lights up and then reflects that light into our world. Now, as, as the light who follows our light of salvation, Jesus Christ, we go into our world and we proclaim the hope that we have. We go and we proclaim that Jesus is our light of salvation that has come into the world bringing life for all people. And just as God had wonderful plans to, to display the splendor of this servant Jesus, he has a plan to use you. He has a plan to use you as a light to display the splendor of what Jesus has done to the ends of the earth. So this Christmas season be filled with joy because your light your salvation has come, and he's delivered you from darkness. He's brought light eternally. When that, that final candle is lit on Christmas Eve, uh, on our Advent wreath, when, when we're or when that silent preacher speaks to you on Christmas Day, be reminded that Christ, your light, has come to drive out the darkness of sin in, in my heart. And be reminded that Christ, your light, is coming again to unite you with him eternally and cause you to shine in the brightness of his light forever. We read a, a lesson from Isaiah chapter 49. It's on page 6 of your worship bulletin. And now the Lord says... He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to himself and gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. 
He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who is despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings will see you and stand up, Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. I invite the congregation to please stand as we sing the Song of Mary. congregation may be seated for the collection of the offering. I invite the congregation to please stand. And we join together on page eight where we will speak responsibly. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. our closing hymn. Our closing hymn for this evening is hymn 342, O Jesus Christ, Your Manger Is. Before we end this evening, I would like to say one more quick prayer. Um, Debbie Casey had a surgery this uh, 
not sure how early in the morning, but she got out of, of surgery this morning. She, her appendix had burst. Um, the surgery, uh, from what Frank said, the surgery went well. It was a long surgery, um, but he was able to talk with her this morning, and it sounds like uh, Debbie is doing uh, okay. Um, we don't know a whole lot right now, but we'll know more in, in the coming days. So I'd like to just bow our heads and say a quick prayer for Debbie. O oh God, giver of life, health, safety, and strength, we praise you for having brought uh, Debbie Casey through a safe and successful surgery. We ask that you would be with her as she continues to, to heal from uh, this, this thing that you have had happen to her. We ask that you would uh, be with her family as, as they go through the challenges over the next few days. We ask that you would bless the, the doctors and nurses as they um, carry out uh, the, the care for Debbie, that they would do what is best for her. And we ask that you would bring peace um, to, to those surrounded by her um, at this time. We ask that, that you would continue to give her support through her congregation and through her family and friends that are there to guide her back to you and your word. We ask that you would be with her through this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So continue to pray for, for Debbie and for their family over the next few days and next few weeks and months. We ask for a, a healthy and speedy recovery for her. Um, coming up this week, there's a lot. So um, you've, you've hopefully seen a bit of the, the, uh, the things that we've put out for Christmas. Our services will be two services on Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve is Sunday this year. So two services, 1030 will be our Sunday school service. 10.30 a.m., 7 o'clock at night, we'll have a Lessons and Carols uh, candlelight service. So you are welcome to join us for both services. And then we also have Christmas Day service at 10.30. Uh, it'll be a Christmas celebration service with also a communion on Christmas Day. Um, so come, come and enjoy all of the services that we have to offer. Uh, each one of them will be slightly different. Each one of them will offer an opportunity to sing some of your favorite Christmas hymns and things like that. And then again, hear the, the wonderful Christmas story. Uh, so come join us for those worship opportunities. Other than that, I don't think I have uh, very many announcements. So I will go uh, take off my robe and then I'll come greet you guys. Thank you.